interview question four. Let's get started. Write a function that returns the count of unique string values passed into a method. What do I mean by that? Let's just assume we have calls to the same method which take in a string parameter. Something like this. We have a method called count that has a parameter of type string. So let's just say we pass in the value a to this method. We pass in this value a, we want to get a count of the value that is passed in. So this first method would just simply return one. If we call that same method again right below it with the same parameter passed in, the value that's supposed to be returned would be two. And if we call that method a third time, the value that's supposed to be returned would be equal to three. Here's another, here's another example. We have the same method, but for this method, you can see here we're passing in different values. So let's start from the top once more. We have a method called count. We pass in A. This method is supposed to return one. But then we call this method again and we pass in another value. This value, this, the value that's supposed to be returned here would be one. The reason that one is being returned is because this is an entirely new value. We've switched from A to B. And if we call this method one more time and pass in B, the value we get is two. So basically the last method that is passed in is the value that we're most concerned about. And to make this a little bit more clear, I'm gonna explain it a little bit more down here. So basically the count is incremented for the same string passed in and should be reset when a new string is passed in. So, this explains clearly what we're doing here. If we pass in three A's to this method, the count is supposed to be incremented. That's why we're getting three here. But if we pass in A and then we pass in B here, the return value for this count B will reset the count. And then from here, if we pass in another B, this count is supposed to be incremented. The most, another thing to take note of is that the most important function call will be the last function call. So basically whatever method is called last will be the method that is most important to us or the value that we're actually looking for. And in order to implement this count function, the first thing we need to do is create this thing called a hash map. The data structure that we need is a hash map, pretty much. Now, what is a hash map? Hash map implements an associative array that consists of key value pairs. This is what a hash map looks like. We have the object of hash map. We then have two data types, a string and an integer. This string is going to be associated with the value that is passed in to the count method and this integer is going to be used to keep track of the count of the element passed in. Now when you're dealing with hash maps there are two methods you need to consider. The first one is the put method. This put method is a method that takes in a key and a value and it's basically a method that's used to add an element to a hash map and this particular element is going to consist of two values which would be a key and the value associated with that particular key. Another method is the get method. The get method is pretty much a method that is supposed to retrieve the value based on the key that's passed in. So for example if you were to pass in the A here then basically if, if you were to pass in a value here, you would have a value that is associated with this key that is going to be returned when executing this method. And I think one way to make this a little bit clearer is to just start coding. So the first thing I want to do is implement the count function, which is going to look something like this. 
All right. So we're going to now write the method header. Public static count. Well, public static int. And we want this method to return a number. And we also want this method to take in a parameter of type string. We're going to name it my letter. Now, before we actually start the implementation of this method, we want to create two variables outside of this method. We want to create a hash map, and we also want to create an integer of count. So, just like I explained in the slides before, we're going to go static hash map. And as I said before, this value is going to be a string. And the value here is going to be an integer, which represents the count. We're going to name this hash map HM. Set this equal to a new hash map. And we also want to create an int value called count. And I'm just going to initialize this variable here. Now this count variable is used to keep track of the elements that are passed into this method. And I'm going to show you more about how to do this right now. So the first thing we want to do is we first of all know that this method is going to take in a letter, either A, B, whatever letter is going to take, we're going to take in a letter here. So the first thing we want to do is add an if conditioner. If hm dot get my letter equals no, then I want to do something. So basically what I'm saying here is if I try to look for a letter in this hash map and this letter that's passed in here does not exist, then I want to add that letter to the hash map. And I'm going to do that like this. HM dot put my letter and then for this value over here, I want to pass in 1. So this is basically stating that if a letter does not exist within the hash map based on the letter that's passed in, then I want to add that letter to the hash map and I want the count to be set to 1. Another thing I want to do is also set the count that I've declared up here equal to 1. Now this count is pretty much going to be used to keep track of a specific letter that is passed in. So after I finish writing this if conditional, I'm going to add an else clause right below it. Else if the letter, so basically in this else clause, if the letter does exist, then I want to increment the count by 1. And I also want to add the letter again to the hash map and increment the count of the letter passed in by one. Put my letter and count. At the end, right after this else clause, I just want to return hm dot get my letter and that's it that's pretty much what the function is supposed to look like now the next thing to do will be to test it out so I want to go up to my main method here and call this count method once
I'm going to start off with the easiest example first. So if I just simply pass in A, let me print this out to the console as well. If I simply pass in A, and I go up here, and I save, what do you think I'm supposed to get back? I've explained this before. Well, let's see. Go down here, we get one. I explained this earlier. You get one when you pass in only, when you, when you call this method only once, this is the value that you get back. You only get one count for A. So, make this a little bit more complex, but shouldn't be too hard. Count, pass in A, count, Pass in A again. What am I supposed to get now? Three. Run it. We're getting three. Exactly what we were expecting. Now, as I said before in my presentation, the last method call is going to be the most important. So, this is the value that I'm most concerned about. There's three A's, and if you print out down here, count A, then we're gonna get the count of the A's that have been passed in. So if I were to pass in B, I would only get two, because there's only two B's that are being passed in. Even though I'm calling an A up here, the most significant value that's going to be returned will be the last method called, which will be B. So I'm going to get a count of both of these B's. Run this again. We get two. And that's pretty much it. Pretty straightforward here. Let me zoom out for a minute. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video if you felt like you've learned something here. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And until next time.